Uh, thank you very much, Guru, first for your invitation and for uh, friendship, I have to say. I'm very proud. Um, and, and to the Agakan uh, program, of course. I, I think also very funny to be, as a, a Catalan and Republican, to be uh, speaking in the Real Colegio Complutense. <laughs> okay. Muchas gracias. <laughs> Um, the, we started uh, with Richard uh, thinking about this uh, personate uh, business uh, when we were working on the, the Begumpuri uh, uh, mosque that you see here, and also with uh, Rapri Idga in, in uh, Uttar Pradesh. And we thought, well, this personate stuff is not a very convincing label. So uh, I, I've also added uh, this uh, no seper. Uh, to, the, to the title, because I think it, it's a kind of significant leitmotiv to, to these presentations. <coughs> so, um, ve I'm very plan, plan uh, like this, very <laughs> good. So first, uh, um, it, it, it looks like many, many things, uh, a little knick-knack. Um, uh, that, that actually, the, the first point is uh, uh, a few lines of approach uh, in order to to build up a distance with reductive intellectual systems, I would say. Uh, then we'll go to plain representations uh, in a first part um, kind of th uh, theoretic uh, approach uh, with um, kind of numbers and plans. Uh, then uh, um, a scope of application on tomb planning. And uh, on the third part, uh, we'll go to elevation. Uh, of the, the buildings and some points of decor. Uh, the, uh, as I said before, there was this uh, Begumpuri and Rapri, um, uh, the two papers that we've published uh, recently with Richard in Mukarnas. And then also I, had, uh, I was asked to review the, this book uh, that has come, down, uh, come out quite recently, also with the Aga Khan uh, um, project, uh, which is called The Nine Domes of the Universe. <coughs> A very curious form of translation in Persian, but I won't enter into it. Uh, it's uh, interesting because uh, in one of the papers by uh, Melikian uh, it deals with uh, the nine domes in uh, architecture, but also in poetry. And very curiously, he remarks that the metaphor of the nine domes, specifically domes and not heavens or other, is quite rare in Persian poetry, and he sort of wonders why. At the same time, we have uh, uh, this paper by uh, Bernard O'Kain, who uh, speaks, of course, of this uh, Nine Bay, uh, it's in the, in the title, but uh, he discards or alludes the problem, saying that this is a very easy plan to, to, to make, so it doesn't really uh, have uh, any questions. And then I wondered if um, these uh, nine uh, domes uh, uh, were not that present in Persian poetry, be, uh, uh, maybe because they were not Persian or Iranian. <coughs> and uh, you see that uh, uh, the, the construction of uh, the, the nine domes, you can find it here, for instance, in a, in a Buddhist uh, mandala. This was uh, all the most um, curious that uh, there was no relation with this form uh, because uh, uh, we know that uh, Balkh was a very important Buddhist center uh, before uh, Islam, and that uh, uh, even Sharia Adl, for instance, uh, attributed the building of the Nine Dome Mosque in Balkh uh, to Fazl Barmak. Um, so this uh, would make a, a connection. Uh, moreover, Melikian compares uh, also the figure of the dome, uh, and especially the Lotus Dome, to the Samangan Stupa, also in Afghanistan, but not uh, making any reference to um, the, the nine domes or nine, f nine form um, in other um, Buddhist buildings, for instance. Whereas uh, this nine form is uh, quite uh, familiar in India in um, several, um, these for instance, uh, nine Buddhas, 
uh, or also another form uh, which is quite popular, wi uh, which is the Nauratan or uh, nine jewels, uh, with a kind of uh, arithmetic and, uh, and geometric precision. You find it also in, in the Mandapa here in one of the um, Patadakal te uh, temples, which is a bit uh, like an epitome of the Indian temple. <coughs> and uh, which, of course, you can superimpose with a uh, mandala. So, of course, this uh, parallel is, for the moment, uh, only an hypothetical and tentative comparison, but we'll go back to it later. In parallel, uh, we have this work by uh, Amir Khosrow, which is really a very curious work. This is from uh, the Anne-Marie Schimmel uh, uh, article in Ir Iranica. Uh, a very curious work which is very specifically Indian, uh, not only because of the uh, references, references and, and descriptions of Indian culture, but also because of uh, some forms as like, uh, such as the, the, the rain song and of course many vocabulary. Uh, of course, this uh, puts the question of the, what is, has been labeled as the Indo-Persian literature, uh, which uh, uh, Amir Khosrow, as the parrot of India, is one of the uh, biggest um, figures. We know uh, um, among his many works uh, the Hash Behisht, uh, or Eight Paradise, uh, from which uh, Walpole took out the concept of serendipity. Uh, this also will go back later, kind of a surprise. Um, uh, and what is very curious is that nowadays, uh, in India, uh, Amir Khosro is mainly known fro from his, uh, by his compositions in uh, vernacular language, and especially the Braj Basha, uh, uh, for instance, here the Kaheko uh, Biahi Bidesh, that uh, uh, I, when I was in India, I, wa I, I learned singing with this lady, which uh, is called uh, Reka Surya. And she has made uh, um, a, wh a whole program on Amir Khosrow, but only on his Braj uh, language uh, compositions. Um, it is uh, curious that uh, the last great Indo-Persian uh, classical poet, uh, Khalib, is also known for uh, a, um, a very dense uh, divan in Persian, which is quite um, hard, um, and uh, a much more popular divan in Urdu. This, of course, leads us to uh, what do we mean when we, we use the word Persian? Uh, what are we speaking about? Uh, especially that uh, Persian is not a national language, but a, a supranational, uh, hence uh, Dari or Tajik, for instance. And that uh, reading, reading uh, Persian is not the same as writing or speaking. Uh, and probably these different uh, actions are linked to um, uh, sociological uh, levels. Also, because you, um, we say, when we say Persian art in, and we translate it to Persian, Honare uh, Farsi, uh, nobody says that. Uh, so, uh, what does it mean? Uh, uh, the same way I, I, I make a parallel with, uh, for instance, if we spoke of Anglian art, uh, and then also we'll, we'll, we'll uh, come back to the Latinized, Romanized, or Americanized, uh, which this is more um, close to Persianate. Uh, it's curious because, of course, the idea of uh, Iran uh, of, is not new. Uh, Iran Shah uh, was used in, especially in the Sasanian times, and then uh, Firdusi, for instance, uh, speaks often of the Iran Zamin. Uh, but uh, if you take the uh, Cyrus uh, Cylinder, uh, he doesn't uh, call himself uh, for for C or whatever. He only calls him uh, King of Anshan. And still in the Seljuk period, uh, you very rarely come across uh, Iran. Uh, it's more often, for instance, Salatin, Arab, or Ajam. Uh, so no, not uh, really mention, mentioning Iran or even least, uh, least uh, Persia. Uh, 
So, uh, of course, this means that uh, this uh, Persian language uh, is very much out, um, uh, sp uh, spinning out of, of properly Iran. Uh, I've, I've participated with John Perry to this uh, history of Persian literature uh, on a paper on uh, Persian liter Indian Persian literature on arts and inscriptions. Um, and of course, it, 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 it seems obvious, um, but uh, uh, there is a misspelling. I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's not my fault. Uh, another, it ca came out like this. Uh, and another very interesting point also about, uh, for instance, the Persian literature in, in India is that uh, India is the major center for producing Persian dictionaries, for instance, which is logic since it was not a native language. Uh, the, so there are many examples. Uh, another uh, interesting thing also is the Sabke Hindi. Uh, which ha is um, a, a label uh, uh, formed by uh, Bahar, uh, the, the, the great historian of Persian literature, but uh, uh, which really uh, needs uh, reassessment, uh, which has been the point of, of some, some papers. Uh, this is one, but there are many others, recent papers on, the, on this topic. So naturally, this will, uh, will, uh, will lead us to what is Persianate. And I start uh, uh, doing my mea culpa, uh, since I <gasps> dared to use this word in the <laughs> SOAS conferences in, in 2013. Um, I would not do it anymore, I promise. Um, and this, of course, has been m much before, since uh, this is the trans English translation of uh, my thesis in, um, published in 1994, uh, where I, I used this Indo-Persian technical literature. Uh, yeah. I, I remember that uh, David Roxburgh, uh, doing, uh, making his review of, of this book, uh, may, made a, a commentary of, uh, well, it's not very nice to mix in Iran and India as if it was the same, which I, I, I really um, um, approve. Uh, so uh, the thing is that I, I wanted uh, with uh, this research, uh, starting from texts, uh, to try to find a kind of objectivity. I was quite young and innocent. Um, <laughs> and I thought that the, this textualist approach uh, would allow me a kind of internal view uh, of, let's say, uh, Persian painting. Uh, but what, what does it mean? And a kind of uh, historical objectivity. But then, of course, this amalgam could be also uh, be interpreted as an, a kind of uh, appropriation. So, apologies. Uh, indeed, uh, one of the questions is to know what is this uh, Persian international? Is uh, this uh, a koine or a lingua franca, for instance? Uh, lingua franca does not necessarily imply a, a hierarchy or a specific national cultural references, but allows exchanges. <coughs> Moreover, this concept of Persianate or Persianism is not new. Uh, this is a very interesting, quite recent uh, book uh, on Persianism. Of course, in antiquity, and especially viewed from Greece, uh, Persianism is a bit like uh, the Fistan Sardanapal, uh, something terrible, or even worse, I didn't dare putting a, a, an image, but even worse is uh, Xerxes in the 300. I don't know if you have seen this obnoxious thing. <laughs> Uh, of course, uh, this implies a kind of uh, um, um, idea of uh, being under the influence of, uh, uh, and then, of course, of a kind of supremacy. But, uh, of course, uh, it depends on uh, the point of view. Uh, moreover, in the introduction of this book, it's very uh, on antiquity, uh, it's very interesting to see a quotation by Muhammad Iqbal, uh, as, uh, which I think really very interesting to this discussion uh, about the, the Islam conversion to Persianism. Uh, it's uh, quite, well. Um, so the question would be, uh, if uh, there is an hegemonic culture, let's say Persian for instance, uh, of course it would imply a hierarchy, but as we'll see, it depends from whose point of view. 
Indeed, uh, in the historiography, uh, we find really very shocking examples. Uh, for instance, uh, I'm working on Luster at the moment, so I've been digging a bit on, on historiography also, uh, like uh, uh, Henry Wallace's quotation, which is, uh, yeah. Uh, how do you dare? Uh, or this uh, found, found in the Spectator uh, 1920, uh, which is uh, uh, we we couldn't write this anymore li like this, of course. So it's uh, I don't know if it's uh, appropriation or even spoliation. Uh, the uh, for instance the um, way uh, in Pope, for instance, we find that uh, the Persians had invented lust, uh, which of course it's gross. Uh. Um, <coughs> where, whereas, well, now it, I think it's established that uh, these lusters were made in, in Iraq. Um, another way of uh, um, uh, going to this kind of um, parallels that might, might be misleading is, uh, for instance, when uh, someone has compared the Adina Masjid in Pandua uh, to the uh, Yvonne, uh, Yvonne Madoen or the Ctesiphon um, uh, um, uh, arch, uh, which uh, uh, might uh, be interpreted as a kind of intertextuality or interreferences between, between monuments, but also might be quite misleading. Uh, indeed, we could imagine that the form was maybe related to this, but uh, what was the intention of the builders of the Adina Masjid, and did they even know what was Ctesiphon um, uh, looking like? That uh, can be doubted. Indeed, uh, when you approach to the mihrab of this, uh, you, you discover, uh, for instance, uh, this Makara head, uh, which has been re reused in the Mimbar. Uh, we are here very, very far from Ctesiphon. Uh, um, so uh, the idea is that uh, referring to is first differing from, um, or as we say in French, comparaison n'est pas raison. <laughs> Another example uh, could be, uh, for instance, uh, I've come across this very recently also in, in a, a thesis, uh, is that um, uh, reusing uh, uh, George Michel uh, work on, on Firuzabad. Um, um, we compare uh, these uh, lions in, in uh, um, this Bahmanid palace of Firuzabad uh, with uh, Shiro Khorshid. Indeed, this Shiro Khorshid is Bahmanid also. You find it in uh, Bidar. Uh, so it, it, find, it, it, it goes as something natural that these other lions should also be Shiro Khorshid, of, of, of whom um, a reference might be also to the uh, Shirdar Madrasa in, in, in uh, uh, Samarkand, although this is much later. Uh, and it's Uzbek, by the way, it's not Iranian. Uh, or this uh, luster tile, Mongol luster tile. When, whereas uh, no reference is made to the vernacular lion that you can find as, uh, like in uh, Vijayanagar, for instance, not only in the, in the palaces, but also in the coins. So it looks uh, something much more natural to relate these lions to these ones than to these ones. Uh, uh, also because this has volume, whereas these are flat, uh, as absolutely flat. Uh, um, this is a very gross, um, um, also, um, pff, I don't know how to qualify. It's a, a book prefaced by Paul Morand, a member of the Académie Française, uh, La Miniature Persane, and you see the Makamat, of course, well, uh, no, nobody would dare to do this again uh, now, uh, because this is very specifically Iraqi Arab miniature, which has nothing to do with the Persian world. Uh, or not much. Um, another uh, uh, much recent, uh, this was in a newspaper, Le Républicain, uh, oops, sorry, Le Républicain Lorrain, um, uh, announcing uh, the exhibition that was to be held in the Institut du Monde Arabe, uh, called uh, uh, Jardin d'Orient de la Lambra au Taj Mahal, means from Spain to India. Huh? Um, and with, of course, a uh, very, well, this is a, a newspaper, it's not scientific material, but 
Persian miniature, this is of course Mughal. Eh? And uh, four parts representing four elements, this is invention, eh? has nothing to do. Uh, the pity is that in this exhibition to which I participated, I, I must admit, I, I, uh, there was many confusions, and especially about this um, idea of the, the, the char bag uh, raising from the idea of the four rivers of the paradise, uh, which actually could perfectly flow in parallel, uh, that don't have to cross at, at, at uh, right angles. Uh, uh, this, from this uh, arises also the idea uh, that there is a kind of global char bag, uh, with, uh, which is completely stupid because it represents the crushing of, of time and space. Uh, but uh, and beyond that, uh, what, uh, th thus the gardens from Iran would be a kind of alma mater to the gardens of uh, half the world, uh, up to Aga Khan's uh, garden in Alberta. Uh, have you seen that? Um, nice. Uh, so, of course, uh, the idea is uh, do these four rivers uh, or four things uh, imply a specific plan? Uh, and that's what uh, will uh, see now uh, with the uh, uh, second part on plain representations. Um, uh, here we have two interpretations of uh, uh, this um, uh, theme of the, the seven cupolas in, in uh, uh, Iskandar Sultan's anthology and in a Hamza of Amir Khosro uh, from Yazd. Uh, you see that uh, uh, the evolution from black to white is horizontal uh, and it goes uh, uh, from right uh, to uh, left, whereas here it goes from, well, it doesn't matter, the, it's horizontal. Uh, and, uh, oops, it goes it's very quickly this. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, observe first very quickly uh, some stories about the charbag, uh, fairy tales about charbag. Uh, then uh, this aft, aft hashed no, uh, which sounds a bit like uh, outbidding, uh, or maybe a kind of uh, safety in numbers. Uh, we'll go uh, uh, through, through this. Uh, first, it's uh, important to uh, see in, in Persian uh, what do we mean when we use the number four. Charpa, uh, uh, it's uh, of course four, four, four quadruped or, or bedstead, but for chaman, for instance, it's not specifically four. Uh, it, mi it might be much other uh, for forms. Uh, and char zaban, for instance, it, it's, it's not uh, who's, uh, someone who speaks four languages. Uh, uh, and the char su is not necessarily four streets with a corner, uh, uh, and, and, so, and so on. So, uh, Chael, it's even worse because none of these examples means 40 something, uh, 40 feet, for instance. Uh, well, we say centipede. I never counted them, but really, uh, I don't know how much they are. And especially that uh, Chael Sotun, for instance, doesn't mean 40 columns, means a colonnade, that's it. Uh, and of course, everyone knows the, 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 the thieves from Alibaba, uh, they are 40. Why? And uh, because they mean they are a lot. Kirkus uh, or, or, or Dochteron also is a very, a very, uh, uh, comes often, uh, but who knows who are these uh, 40 ladies. Uh. So, uh, is Charbak for gardens? Uh, <coughs> or a garden of some type or several or manifold? Um, uh, the, there is, um, uh, and this was one of the points I, I became extremely angry with the uh, people in the uh, Institut de Mondahab, uh, this idea that everything arises from uh, uh, Passargad and this uh, gives uh, way to a kind of uh, Darwinian uh, genealogy uh, that would uh, come to the end with uh, Umayyad's tomb. Of course, they are intermediaries. Uh, 
such as uh, the gardens in Samara, maybe, but this, of course, this is not sure. Uh, uh, so they have some, some have told that there was a char bug in Sanchar uh, Stum in, in Marv, and of course, the description of the char bug uh, by Fazle Heravi, which is uh, uh, nothing uh, resembling this, actually. Uh, it's rectangular, it has, it's not square, and it can be, uh, can have, uh, be as long as you want. Uh, and also, this genealogy goes through Spain uh, uh, like something obvious. Um, well, this is, of course, completely ridiculous, and we don't believe this to be right. Uh, one of the, of the most uh, known examples is, of course, the Charbag in the Charbag Avenue in Isfahan, uh, with these many gardens on the two sides. <coughs> Some. Uh, look uh, almost square, but uh, many are rectangular, such as the Hashbehest Garden, uh, which is now uh, unhappily quite uh, mi uh, missing apart. Um, you can reconstruct more or less with uh, this very strong axial uh, um, north-south uh, uh, line and very limited on east-west. And of course, the square is only uh, here. Uh, this um, uh, um, Hashbehest uh, garden, of course, uh, might be uh, misleading, misleading because, of course, everybody knows that uh, eight is uh, f four twice. Huh? But is this a relation <coughs> or a logic of numbers uh, in this uh, example? Uh, going to seven, uh, of course, seven has been uh, like uh, half pekar. Uh, here we have the half picker from uh, um, uh Hamsa in in the, in, uh, in Leningrad uh, in Saint Petersburg. <laughs> I'm too old. Um, and of course uh, the uh, uh, ziggurat in Babylon with uh, seven uh, stages of different colors. We have uh, the seven skies uh, here in uh, ascensional uh, representation, whereas the, uh, the Hawarnak Palace is shown in an horizontal uh, representation, but still it's s seven. And uh, uh, of course, the, the symbol is uh, very old, a kind of a symbol, uh, heliocentric symbol of the the planets uh, um, uh, around the, the sun uh, that we find uh, in the Shaizendi here or in the uh, great Mongol Shahnameh, uh, the death of Alexander. Everybody knows that, I guess, but still. And of course, in many objects uh, uh, in quite a large area. Uh, what is quite interesting is when we look at uh, Nezami's um, um, text uh, is that Bahram Gur's itinerary, itinerary from one palace to the other is not going uh, in a um, step-by-step um, horizontal line, but instead is going from south to northwest, then from northwest to uh, northeast, then from northeast to north, then from uh, north to southwest, and from southwest uh, to southeast, uh, finally to the middle, uh, which is uh, interesting because it means that the Bahram Gur draws on the uh, on the soil uh, draws the pattern of an hexagram. Of course, the seven figure, the heptagram, uh, is uh, very uh, complicated to draw, and there are many. A uh, few examples. Uh, some find it in some Gothic uh, cathedrals, like this one in Mo, uh, but uh, might be also a bit phantas phantasmagoric, but whatever. Uh, eight, of course, is much more easy uh, to draw, and we find it uh, in many, many examples. Uh, as I said, it's, it's uh, four uh, twi twice, uh, so that means. Mm, very easy. Um, there is a very interesting uh, article of my friend and colleague uh, Michele Bernardini in uh, Iranica on the Hashbehesht business. Um, he relates the Hashbehesht uh, to the uh, oops, voilà, to the eight gates of paradise. Uh, um, 
which, uh, uh, by the way, are not non-Quranic. Uh, they don't. Uh, they appear la later, um, and also he links it to uh, the uh, Avestan Vahishta. Uh, but I think this is absolutely not clear at all. Actually, the, the, the problem of, of the uh, Mazdian uh, eschatology is very thorny, uh, but definitely it needs an historicization because most of the, these um, uh, late Avestic uh, sources um, are very late, uh, so not a Sasanian at all. Then, uh, of course, there would be also maybe a uh, um, um, question with this um, plan of the Northern Garden in Lashkari Bazar um, Palace. <coughs> but uh, uh, the, it's, it's very problematic, especially because this uh, garden do doesn't exist anymore. <coughs> uh, the, in the middle of the, 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 the eight gates, of course, is the, the throne, uh, the, the kursi. <coughs> and uh, another interesting thing also is that uh, the representation, uh, the bidimensional representation of, of the uh, octagon is usually made uh, either in uh, Persian and Indian miniatures as an hexagon, actually. There are, of course, many examples uh, in literature, uh, amongst, among them uh, the Hashbihisht from uh, Tabriz, uh, that we know through texts and descriptions, Italian among others, uh, and also by this uh, um, uh, Matrach's uh, work. Uh, the, the <coughs> Oops. Uh, and, of course, the Chinli Kirsch, uh, that uh, uh, Gilru knows well, and has been uh, uh, linked to this um, kind of uh, uh, international Timurid, um, uh, like uh, uh, being um, a kind of a response. Uh, I think that uh, um, international Timurid is a much more clever way to say things than Persianized, for instance. Uh, if you allow me. Uh, but um, that doesn't mean that I completely agree uh, with this, because uh, the Chinli Kirsch has a very strong actual uh, um, geometry uh, direction, and it's not a centered plan. Uh, <coughs> and this, of course, you uh, um, also you know that the, the problem of the, the Khurasani workers uh, in this document translated by Kremler is far from clear because you don't know to which building really it relates. We assume that, that is this one, but it's. I, I, I will tell you more about this. Uh, <coughs> uh, of course, the mo uh, best known uh, Hashbesh is uh, uh, the Isfan uh, one uh, with this plan. Uh, which apparently uh, is symmetric, but it actually is not. And especially that you, you notice that one of the um, um, directions is closed by, a, by a, a wall with a waterfall on it, and it, it's really very much uh, spectacular. Uh, uh, in this uh, respect, uh, uh, my, one of my former students, uh, Jean Dobrignoli, in his thesis on, on, on um, Safavid uh, um, palaces, uh, has taken the idea that uh, uh, precisely there was a kind of serendipity in this uh, uh, Isfahan's Hashbehisht uh, because of the uh, uh, surprising in every, in every part. And, and it's completely asymmetric and with a strong uh, axiality also. Uh, instead, the Hashbehisht uh, in Ahmad Nagar uh, is uh, absolutely perfect uh, in geometry. Uh, and moreover, has a um, uh, radiant uh, view, uh, perception of the space. So it's, uh, uh, you, you can find out that the conception between uh, this Hashbehesht uh, in Ahmad Nagar or the Sher Mandal uh, in Delhi have actually not much to do with uh, Iranian buildings. Uh, last example is uh, the uh, nonagon or no uh, sepeh or whatever, uh, w which we find, for instance, in the Nauratan, uh, which are the, the nine jewels 
uh, figuring uh, kind of uh, cosmogony. Uh, these, of course, are made of the seven that everybody knows, plus uh, eight and nine, which are the ascending and descending lunar node. These, of course, respond to uh, divinities. Uh, that you find here in this uh, lithograph, but that you find also, for instance, in a ceiling in a um, Badami uh, cave, much older, of course. In uh, Persian uh, um, manuscripts, you find very rarely, and this is a very strange miniature in an incomplete uh, manuscript in the Bibliothèque Nationale, uh, which uh, is called No Manzar. Uh, where you find uh, nine, um, uh, the, the nine things, uh, it means uh, the seven planets plus the sky and the constellations. And happily, uh, we don't know the author of this uh, work. And of course, the most surprising of these um, uh, nine uh, buildings is the uh, Nauraspur built by uh, Ibrahim Adil Shah II next to Bijapur. Uh, it's, uh, uh, of course, not often that you find uh, buildings in with nine sides. Uh, we, we know also that uh, this uh, Ibrahim Adil Shah composed the uh, Kitab el uh, of which you see a page here, uh, which is divided now in several places. Uh, Navina Haidar made, of course, a, a, a remarkable contribution, especially on uh, Cleveland, also page, uh, the pages from, from Cleveland. <coughs> and Delhi. Uh, the um, book by, uh, by um, Ibrahim Adil Shah is, uh, of course, based on the Raza theory uh, um, as, oops, oh, you, 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 you. <laughs> please, as uh, uh, theorized by uh, Abhinava Gupta, among others. Uh, and we find uh, um, a parallel, of course, uh, we are French. Uh, with uh, uh, Baudelaire uh, correspondence <laughs> uh, with uh, perfumes, colors, and sounds. So, uh, as a scope of application we'll of these of this, uh, forms, we'll uh, th turn to tomb planning, and especially uh, to the uh, question, for instance, if uh, Umayyad's tomb is really uh, hash behesht. Uh, it could be the, the Taj Mahal, it could be exactly the same. Uh, uh, and deriving directly from uh, Timurid prototypes, such as uh, the Guremir or uh, Ahmad Yasser's tomb. Uh, the tombs uh, started uh, probably uh, <coughs> with uh, centered plans uh, with uh, Saint Serge Bacchus and the Dome of the Rock uh, and the Kubat Surabiya, which is supposed to be uh, remote, that's what Cresswell says, uh, remotely inspired from uh, by the, the Dome of the Rock and later examples like uh, Samanid or the Tim Mausoleum or even later with the uh, uh, Seljuk uh, Harapan Mausoleum oct Octagonal. Uh, this evolution, of course, it's, uh, I, I make it very, very uh, simplified, uh, goes through the Ilkhanid uh, Ghazania probably and disappeared, or the Sultania. Uh, and then uh, with uh, um, um, going to, to what's happening in, in India, uh, we have uh, uh, several uh, oct octagonal tombs uh, with the Sayyid and Lodi uh, sultans, but also some uh, uh, other kinds of tombs, such as square ones and of the cube uh, shape, or another which is very uh, specific, which is the kind of baradari uh, or 12 doors uh, pavilion. Uh, I w won't uh, be long on the uh, octagonal uh, tomb of uh, Khan um, which is the, the model for the, the, uh, the posterior ones, uh, the, the, the first octagonal tomb in, in Delhi, which unhappily is nowadays uh, um, fully encroached and almost uh, not able to uh, be seen anymore. Um, but I will uh, deal with um, uh, another kind of type, which is the tomb of Bahlul in Chirardili, uh, which is a square, <coughs> which can be also divided in uh, nine. <coughs> and uh, the form, you find it, for instance, in the uh, Begumpuri Masjid Muluk Khana, uh, 
uh, which uh, uh, you have here. But you, of course, it's the same form than the Balkh uh, mosque. And, uh, so the building up is um, quite regular. Uh, we find other more interesting examples uh, for in the Lodi architecture, for instance, with this Kalpi uh, Chaura Sigumbad, uh, which was published uh, long ago uh, by uh, Haxton. But uh, you see that uh, the, the covered part here uh, it has uh, um, many uh, columns or um, uh, subdivisions. Actually, the central covered part is a square uh, that can be uh, multiplied uh, in the whole area. The same with also the uh, uh, Bibi Zarina's tomb uh, uh, in Dolpur, published by, uh, recently by uh, uh, Mehtar uh, Shokuhi, uh, or the um, uh, Baradari in Sikandra, uh, which is still even more puzzling, <coughs> since, of course, the division yeah. Yeah, appears quite clearly. Um, and also the superimposition of the uh, mandala, which can be. <coughs> uh, and this is the Datya Palace, uh, but it could be also the Ranakpur temple, and they are all built uh, in according to this uh, uh, three by three uh, square. Uh, <coughs> when we come to uh, Sikandar's uh, uh, tomb in, in Delhi, uh, we, uh, we see at first uh, uh, something that really looks like a what uh, people call a char bag, usually, uh, means four parts. Uh, but actually, <coughs> the uh, three by three division is much more accurate since it uh, gives uh, the tomb its proper central place uh, and not a, a, a shared one. So, of course, following this evolution, uh, we could come up to the uh, Humayun's tomb and garden <coughs> with a uh, a square uh, three by three uh, uh, composition uh, and the uh, building the same, uh, which uh, could also be superimposed with uh, here the Tilangani octagonal tomb. But the problem is, is it a hash behest or a no uh, And one of the answers I propose is uh, uh, try to avoid entrapping forms in structuring archetypes uh, instead of uh, uh, seeing the mutability of forms. So we come to the third and last part uh, on the elevation and decor and also on the very much uh, evocative power of forms and words. Uh, uh, in this case, the Avon uh, or Iwan. Uh, with a, a reminder uh, of the Hakani's uh, ode to the uh, Madain or Ktesiphon um, arch. It's very interesting that, uh, for instance, there are several uh, magazines and reviews uh, for an architecture uh, the, uh, in Iran and abroad that are called the uh, Iwan. Uh, uh, <coughs> And also it is very interesting that uh, in the poem written by Badr Chach on the Begumpuri Masjid, uh, he never uses the word uh, Iwan uh, for describing the mosque, whereas he, use it, uh, he uses once uh, describing the palace, which is uh, next to it on the, on the right, uh, the north, actually. So, uh, of course, uh, it's very... Uh, um, we are very much tempted to uh, make a relation between, let's say, the, the large uh, 41 mosques from, from uh, Iran, for instance, uh, which have also this relation uh, with, uh, uh, this is Bishapur and Ktesiphon again, uh, uh, with uh, this word of uh, Iwan. Um, but when we look closely at the Begumpuri Masjid in Delhi, uh, we saw, uh, we see a, a very square uh, uh, courtyard, very large, uh, as, as Richard has demonstrated that the void in this place is extremely important and very different from the Iranian mosques. And uh, also, it's very uh, curious that uh, um, uh, Nat, or Nat, uses this Brat Muki uh, or uh, four pillars plan uh, to describe the mosque, which I think is 
as improper as the 41 plan. Uh, both of them are not very proper. Uh, one of uh, the big differences between uh, the Iranian and um, Indian mosques uh, with uh, so-called 41 plans is the external approach. Uh, you don't see much of it from the outside, whereas in uh, the Indian mosque you have this very much raised uh, platform and very much monumentalized entry uh, that, of course, uh, er, um, is not, you don't find even, for instance, the Bibi Hanum or the Varamin uh, mosque, for instance. Uh, also, uh, I was quite surprised to see that there was no parallel proposed with uh, Mamluk mosques, such as, for instance, the uh, Sultan Baybars, uh, which is not so farly remote from the Begumpuri uh, plan. Of course, there are some similarities, and for instance, the Iwan from the uh, prayer room in uh, uh, Begumpuri is uh, almost the same uh, ratio as the one in Natanz, it means in a very classical Selchuk 41 mosque. Uh, but uh, the big difference is with the other Iwans, and especially uh, the south and north uh, Iwans, which are not Iwans at all, uh, which are doors, and uh, means uh, not at all the same, the same principle. And uh, the ratio of the entrance Iwan also, which is very, very much um, close to the square uh, and much, much less elegant. Um, um, Barry, uh, Barry Flood uh, uh, made these uh, Persianate trends uh, speaking about the uh, Great Mosque of Badaun. And it's true that even in the plan you can see that the mosque in Badaun has much larger iwans and the form also is much larger. Uh, this doesn't mean that this mosque from Badaun resembles a Persian mosque. Uh, 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 among the other Persian trends, he also makes use of uh, tiles, uh, whereas, as, as we'll see, uh, Persian tiles are, are quite different from the Indian ones. And so, of course, um, Iwan is also used for, for, let's say, the Aleppo or, or uh, Madrasa uh, Sultan Hassan, as also uh, Iwan being a typically Iranian form. Uh. Of course, in the uh, Indian architecture, we find uh, many other forms, uh, and which have, of course, very strange names, uh, Chatri, Jaroka, well, Jalistil, it's quite simple, or Shaja for the Eve, uh, which um, um, uh, uh, imply that uh, there has been uh, not only adaptations of foreign uh, forms, but also uh, the mixing with many local uh, uh, items. Um, f workforce materials and, and, and let's say, culture. Um, speaking about tiles, what is very curious is that in many of the archaeological survey publications up to now, up to nowadays, when um, archaeologists find tiles, they call them Persian, uh, even if they are uh, made locally. Uh, uh, whereas, of course, uh, the Indian tiles are quite specific. Even when you come to the Mughal uh, er, uh, era, like this in Adaka Khan's tomb in Nizamuddin, uh, you can compare it with this, which actually is from Bukhara. Uh, and you see that we, you can find parallels, but for instance, the colors are completely different. Uh, and the technique is not the same also. I won't bother you with glazes. But what is very interesting in India is that uh, glazed ceramics appear much before Islam, and especially uh, this is based on, on uh, uh, archaeological surveys uh, reports. You find, uh, especially uh, for instance in Bihar or in the uh, uh, Mathura area, it's related to Buddhist uh, sites. And they are locally made. Uh, of course, I'm not speaking of imports. Uh, this, of course, is quite interesting because it means that uh, they, they didn't have to wait for the Muslim invaders uh, in India to discover how to make glazed pottery. Uh, this is a, a sample of what you find in archaeological survey, uh, uh, like, for instance, Chinese celadon in its indigenous variety, uh, or uh, fragments of inscribed Persian glazed tile with Arabic legends. Uh, 
what does this mean exactly? Uh, uh, another mention, which is quite uh, um, uh, never mentioned, uh, is uh, in, in uh, uh, the, the excavations that were made in the uh, next to the uh, Kutub Minar uh, of these uh, um, uh, lo basket loads of, of green of green turquoise green uh, tiles, uh, which is quite interesting also. Uh, this uh, we have uh, worked, uh, we, we went with Richard to this Rapri Idga, which is quite far <laughs> off the track, but very interesting uh, because it's the uh, oldest uh, standing uh, sultanate monument with glazed tiles. And <coughs> um, it's, uh, uh, of course, uh, locally made um, with a, a technique which is, again, different wha from what you find uh, in even in the Indus Valley. Uh, and not to say about uh, uh, Central Asia or Iran. Uh, uh, in the Begumpuri, you find also these exceptional molded uh, tiles with uh, turquoise glazed in the form of lotus, which must, must have been with uh, two rows of petals, probably. And you find also another kind of square tile, uh, which uh, are used spare sparsely. Uh, and which probably were supposed to cover originally uh, large uh, surfaces. This, of course, is quite evocative of, of some uh, Ilhanid uh, tiles, although I don't know similar ones in Iran. Uh, in Iran, uh, for instance, in Bastam, uh, they look much uh, more like this. Um, about which uh, there is this style, which has been published, among others, by uh, Tan uh, Tanvir Hassan in, uh, in his paper on, on uh, Sultanate tiles, which is supposed to be in the VNA uh, and supposed to come from uh, Delhi, uh, but I haven't been able to find it yet. Uh, this kind of kufik in labyrinth, uh, you find it very rarely in, uh, in, in Delhi, uh, but uh, on, on the other side you find it, for instance, in, in Mandu. Uh, I've published a, a paper on this Mandu tile some quite long ago. And you will find this labyrinth form also later in, uh, uh, well, almost contemporary with, uh, with um, uh, Mandu in the Ashtur tomb uh, in, in Bidar. Another example, and almost we are almost finished, uh, of the uh, tiles is uh, the ones in the Shishe Gumbad in the Lodi Garden in Delhi, uh, with a, 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 a tomb which is unhappily not uh, accurately dated. And these uh, tiles figure among uh, turquoise and cobalt uh, glazed square tiles. Uh, there, there are quite several, and they are almost all uh, unique. Uh, different one from the other. Some have, uh, uh, most of them have um, words or things written uh, in, in Persian, uh, especially Erbal or Bakay uh, Omreto, something bod. It's not very uh, simple to, to, to read. Uh, this one is very nice with this kind of chinoiserie uh, a motif on the, on the back. Uh, and of course, this is very unique. Uh, you don't know uh, many mm, tiles of this kind anywhere else. Uh, so, and uh, they are most probably uh, locally uh, made. Uh, the same with uh, uh, slightly later uh, tiles, which are uh, just uh, just uh, above the, the, uh, the uh, no, under the shaja of this of this tomb. Uh, which are um, uh, under glaze pa and painted tiles in blue and white, uh, which are reminiscent of the ones in the Shishe Gumbad, and which are not that far removed from some uh, vessels found in Delhi, like this one in uh, Puranakila um, uh, excavations. Uh, the thing is uh, also interesting to, to uh, this place, plate is also interesting to be compared with uh, uh, an, another finding from uh, Firuz Shah Kotla, uh, which are this, this uh, fi finding of 72 Chinese uh, ceramics and porcelains. And uh, this motif of the waves and rocks that you see here, uh, which is repeated in Timurid and Disnik, and that uh, you find also here, uh, which tends to show a kind of uh, 
um, horizontal uh, circulation of uh, motifs. Um, horizontal because I don't want to put uh, a, a hierarchy here uh, in uh, uh, the adaptation of these uh, motifs and, and, and shapes. <coughs> so, to conclude, um, one of the first questions uh, is, is the, the, that of assimilation of one culture by another, and seen from uh, either seen from outside or from the inside, uh, because both of them appear, which uh, uh, comes to an oversimplification, implying a very reductive vision and maybe implying also a certain intellectual laziness. Uh, we could find, uh, like uh, the patronage of Marcel Proust, uh, 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 thinking on involuntary memory versus uh, con conscious recognition, but uh, uh, actually I think that most of the time it comes merely to uh, uh, appropriation. Um, I think we have to be very uh, cautious using pers personate, especially uh, uh, speaking about uh, art, um, uh, as this might uh, imply establishing a hierarchy between a valued source that we'll call A and uh, less valued ramification uh, that like uh, subculture, culture, uh, provincial or epigon. Now there is, for instance, a paper on, on, uh, of uh, Melikian on, on Indian bronze that he uh, uh, calls uh, epigon of uh, uh, Iranian ones. Or, as they said uh, wha when I was a kid in Spain, about the Catalan language, they call it uh, peculiaridad regional, uh, <laughs> means something that doesn't account for nothing. Uh, at any rate, uh, it is obvious that the linguistics is different from uh, culture, uh, pr most probably, and that uh, we have also to take uh, uh, into account the uh, sociology of the users of Persian, uh, because not everyone uses, well, nowadays almost no, no one uses Persian in India. Uh, I was quite surprised, even for very well educated. So the, the use of lo local uh, resources and uh, adaptation of uh, exterior elements uh, implies that uh, you have to take into account the cultural substrata, materials, climate, workforce, and also this balance between innovation and uh, con conserva ah, conservationism. Uh, I, I have my French accent going up. Uh, in other words, uh, that uh, uh, no, no way of um, uh, adding A to B to make uh, other than C uh, and different from imitation, influence and copy. That's what I recommend to my students when they use the word influence. Uh, <laughs> uh, a final example, of course very gross, uh, which is a bit like a spot the error, uh, is comparing the Taj Mahal with the Bibiki Magbara. And this I found on the net, I thought, I thought very, very funny. Because really, uh, it's ridiculous. Uh, is this the only difference you see between <laughs> this and that? Uh, that's abs absolutely uh, ridiculous. The uh, thing that um, uh, hasn't been taken into account quite often is that uh, the two, uh, the, the Taj and the Bibiki Magbara, are based on two completely different conceptions of, of space. Uh, and this will not, absolutely not fit the nine squares, uh, as, as here it fits, uh, here it doesn't fit at all. And you have a, a, a composition which is absolutely unique and which calls for attention, of course. Uh, so in, instead of encasing things in cases, I think, uh, uh, I think that the, the mutability of cultural streams is more important uh, and instead of trying to make it square. <laughs> Thank you. Je ne sais pas si j'étais...